Happy New Year, everybody. It's officially 2017. It's a whole new year for people to complain about and be upset. I can't wait. Today we're gonna to do something new that I hope becomes a yearly tradition on my channel, and that's talk about the most underrated and overlooked films of 2016. Now what's the difference between those two terms to me? For me, overlooked is pretty self-explanatory. It's a film that I thought was good that not a lot of people saw. Underrated is a little bit different. For me, this is a film that I really appreciated and maybe even loved, but maybe critics and audience members didn't feel the same way, and I think it deserves a little more notice. And obviously some titles are gonna carry over from my best of the year list, and we're gonna get a little bit of repeats here, but that's to be expected. Let's get going. This is not in order. This is not a list. This isn't in some sort of descending or ascending order. This is just a bunch of films that I think you should see at some point if you haven't already. Starting out with Overlooked, The Boy and the Beast. This film was on my best of the year list. I think it's a fantastic anime film that not enough people saw. If you get a chance to see this movie, or even if you don't have a chance, just, just try to find it and, and check it out. I think it's worth your time. In the category of Underrated, another film from my best of the year list, Swiss Army Man. This film was so different and so subversive. It had a farting corpse. A lot of people didn't like it. People walked out of it at film festivals. That was kind of dumb, because this was a really, really original and different movie, and it should be praised for that. Next in the category of overlooked, Sing Street. This is a film I didn't get a chance to review, but I did see, oh my gosh, I love this movie. This director is very fond of making movies about musicians, and I think this is his best one that he's made so far. It's an extremely enjoyable movie about a boy in Dublin who wants to impress a girl, so he starts a band, because how else do you impress girls? I found this movie awesome. I didn't get a chance to review it, and it was on my honorable mentions list for the best of 2016. Last time I checked, it is on Netflix. If you're watching this video in the future, it might not be, but currently, as far as I know, it is. Check it out. In the category of underrated, The Magnificent Seven. I had a total blast with this movie, and while it got mostly positive reviews, critics seem to feel the same way about almost every Antoine Fuqua movie. They all have very similar ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. It's interesting. And I feel like a lot of people went to it expecting a more serious film, but I was just really excited to see a great Western action thriller shot on film, and it looks beautiful. In the category of overlooked, Hunt for the Wilder People. This movie was so funny. Sam Neill gave the best performance I've seen from him since Jurassic Park. This is from the director of What We Do in the Shadows and the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. This film was about a young boy who gets lost in the woods because his family life is awful and the guy who's helping take care of him is Sam Neill and they get lost in the woods together and they go on an adventure. I wish that more people saw movies like this in theaters because I got to see it in theaters and I loved every minute of it. In the category of underrated, I'm just gonna say it, X-Men Apocalypse. I don't get the hate. I thought this movie was awesome. I really enjoyed this film. It has some flaws, yes, but I really, really don't get the low ratings from critics. People seem to think it's all right, but critics really trash this one, and I thought it was not really deserved. Apocalypse didn't always work for me as a villain, and I can understand when people zero in on that, but I thought the action sequences, the special effects, the performances, especially from James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, were all top-notch. I had a blast with X-Men Apocalypse, and I don't really get the hate from the critics. In the category of overlooked, Eye in the Sky. I saw this film at home, and it was like a crushing weight on my soul. This was a dark, depressing film that really took me on an emotional journey into what it might look like if you were in the middle of warfare, except you were sitting behind a computer screen. It's really intriguing, and I think it's a movie that asks a lot of super important questions, and if you missed out on this one, see it. In the category of underrated, The Accountant. Critics were completely split on this movie, and I really enjoyed it. I thought Gavin O'Connor told this tale in a very unique way. It sometimes went back to the past and then went back to present, and I really liked the way that he tied in the loose ends of his story to make a cohesive movie, and I thought Ben Affleck gave one of the best performances of his career. Also, the action sequences were great. I didn't understand why critics were sour on this one. In the category of overlooked, The Invitation. I saw this film at home, and it started out and I was like, okay, all right, everyone's pretty good in this movie, good performances, what's gonna happen here? Okay, we're getting into, the oh shit, okay. Now it's a movie. 
Wow. Aspects of the way this film concluded I thought were a little bit cheesy, but for the most part this is a film that really sneaks up on you and has a dark, horrific power to it. In the category of underrated, Ouija 2. Now critics like this movie, people on the other hand, eh. I don't know what it is about Mike Flanagan. He makes really good horror films. I like pretty much every film he's made, but people have a hard time getting into them. I don't really know why. I think this was one of the best directed horror films of the year right after The Conjuring 2. Speaking of Mike Flanagan, he directed the movie Hush, and I found this film very overlooked. This is a Netflix movie, a horror film about a killer who is stalking a deaf woman. Such a great idea. There were aspects of Wait Until Dark in there and some other films as well, but I found it white knuckled from beginning to end. In the category of underrated, Regression. This movie was blasted by critics, which I really didn't get. Yes, the ending is a bit disappointing, but I appreciated Ethan Hawke's performance and the police procedural aspect of this movie a lot more than I think most people did. I found the film very eerie and very off-putting. Even though in some ways the story betrays itself, it makes sense because of that time period the film is trying to recreate and the way people felt at that time and then the way the rug was kind of pulled out from underneath people at that time, this movie really makes you feel the same way and I liked it. And last but not least, Overlooked, you probably knew this was coming, The Nice Guys. This was my favorite movie of 2016. I really wish more people saw this film. Critics loved it. Everyone I've ever talked to either liked or loved this movie, but it didn't make any money. Shane Black and everyone involved would love to make more, and I wish that that could happen because this is my favorite movie of the year. I think it has amazing characters, incredible dialogue, and one of the best scripts of the entire year. In fact, it is my favorite script of 2016. Guys, those are my picks for some of the more overlooked and underrated films of 2016. What are some of yours? I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to another year of movie reviews with you guys. You're the best. Thank you once again, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.